You and Martha Coakley were constitutional officers in the same administration. Yeah. You know, one of three or four I mean, important roles. Do you have animus towards her? I mean, she was part of a team with you. Um, I'm trying to move forward. Uh, I, you know, I don't hate anybody. Um, it was a difficult situation. She did what she felt that she had to do. I had done what I felt that I had to do when I was the treasurer. Um, so I'm just trying to look forward and not look backwards. I, I mean, I could wallow in you know, bitterness or anger or uh, retribution, but I, I don't want to do any of that. Not, not, neither of us want to do Tina or I don't want to do that. We want to look forward. The past is behind us. Whatever it is, we fought it out. Uh, I think we did all right at the end of the day. We came through it, um, and I'm okay with, with, um, with that outcome. I mean, the justice system at the end of the day, the court system really worked for us, gave us an opportunity to put our side of the argument out there. I think the judge was, was really fantastic and very fair, and um, that gave me you know, a sense of satisfaction at the end of the day that we got a fair hearing. Um, the jury was very committed and, and very studious, and it would have been nice to have had all 12 of them, but at the end of the day, we'll take was what we Was it 11 to 1? I don't know. I don't know what the outcome was. Um, How come we don't know? <laughs> I, that's a good question. That's a well, good that's question. Well, that's what my sources said. It was 11 to 1, but I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, if it was, then... To you know, quit. it's a little close, you know, but I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay. I think I said at the day of the, the outcome, the day of the mistrial, that it would be hard for me being as stubborn as I am and as committed to my goals and ideals as I am to, to, to judge somebody else that felt that maybe didn't believe me or felt that there was enough evidence to convict me to try to sway them off. So uh, I will tell you that seven days that we waited were the seven longest, most excruciating days of my life. I mean, they were really tough. The deliberation. Yeah, it was brutal. I mean, every single day it was, it was just, uh, you just had so many emotions. They went up and down and all over the place. You thought you were going to get something. And uh, you start to, you know, at first you want. Cause you're, you're, yeah, because your colleague, uh, Sky Campbell, was acquitted. So yeah. he must have been. Yeah, did well, you, he was acquitted on day six. So yeah, we, so did you have a good feeling after that? Though? I did. I had a good feeling. Uh, it was a little lonely um, after that one, Scott, but I was so happy for him. He didn't deserve to be there. And if anyone was going to get a unanimous verdict, I'm glad he got it because he deserved, uh, he's been, you know, dragged to hell and, um, and he didn't deserve any of it. I don't even think he belonged there given the lack of evidence that really brought him, connected him to the, to the case and stuff. So, um, but I was proud to share the stage with him. He's a good friend and, and was a good employee at the state. And so he faces uh, another potential trial. Yeah. Yeah. So it's with the, uh, with it's, the probation department. Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, it's, it's might you be called to testify in that trial, by the way? Uh, I don't think so. But, you know, if Scott needs me, you know, I'll be there for him. He's accused I, of helping John O'Brien get his wife a job. Yeah. In your, Hopefully things will work out for Scott. I mean, I, I, I think that um, I, th I hope that the Attorney General's office is, is done with the Treasury and the Treasury's, you know, uh, Tim Cahill and the Treasury and stuff, and, and maybe we'll move on to other things, other more important things, I think, that, that so, need to be addressed in the criminal justice system. So how does this work with probation? It's something called pre-trial, which I don't really want to get into the terminology there, but it's before yeah. you've been, you haven't been convicted. So. Correct. I mean, it's 18 months. Can, do you have to check in? No, Can you no. drink? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very it's unsupervised. There's, there's yeah. two there's two criteria for it. I cannot run for public office for at least 18 months, um, and or take a public job, and I have to pay that fine. If I pay it within 18 months, it's all over and done with, and it's as if the case never existed. It gets totally um, dismissed. So, it's it's a technical term, the probation, but I don't have to report to anyone or or do anything specific. Those are the only two terms. I can travel. I can, mm. you know, I, I can I can live my life. You don't have to check. I out. can live my life. Yeah. I mean, I'm 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 always careful about how I live my life, so I'm not really worried mm -hmm. about anything else. Uh, I'm not a drinker or you know any of that stuff. So, um, and again, the 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 choice between taking that, which isn't you know what I was hoping for originally, which would have been a clean you know, um, acquittal, um, or going through another trial and going through the headache of dealing with all that stuff and the cost associated with it and the pain to my family, it, it wasn't worth it. Uh, I don't know if the first time it was worth it, but we had to do what we had to do, you know, because I wasn't going to go through life a criminal or, or uh, convicted um, of, a, of a, you know, some kind of a charge that I don't think I did. I mean, there's some kind of sense that when this happened that, oh, well, this is just business as usual on Beacon Hill. Others had done similar things. There's signage around the state and the city with Menino or Deval Patrick on it. And that you were just sort of 
caught up in it. You were the one that was caught. Do, do, do you believe that? That that's kind of I, I don't know. Usual I don't know. I, 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 I don't know, and I, I don't want to bring anyone else into this. You know, it's that's her job to do that, and others. You know, I, I, I didn't. My name was never in that ad. It was never mentioned on those ads. I was never part of those ads. Not just then, but all the way through the eight years I was there. And we've been running commercials since 2004. Um, so I didn't put my name on it. So it's different in that sense. But I can see where people make the connection that that public officials have to be very careful using the power of the incumbency. Um, that is done all the time, where they use the power of the incumbency to help themselves get reelected. And, and in some cases, I think it's justified. In some cases, it isn't. Um, so I, I, whether it's something everyone does, or, or I, I think you should look at it on a case-by-case -case basis, I don't think the law was passed for that reason, though. I think the law was passed, at least I believe the law was passed that I was prosecuted under, was to make sure that public officials don't use their power to take money from people or hold up things or try to get a personal advantage for it. Not so much an elected or uh, an incumbent advantage, but that's, I'm not a lawyer, so it's up to the lawyers to decide what that will do and whether it will, whether things will change. But I don't want to drag anyone else into this. They'll, they'll do what they do. That was the common refrain I heard from a lot of people. Um, but again, my situation was very different. My name wasn't in the ad, and as you saw when you just ran it, you know, it, it wasn't even mentioned in the ad. So, um, and running lottery ads was something that the state has done since the 70s. Um, so it wasn't something new that we just pulled out for this election. Um, but again, those are issues that I don't have to deal with anymore, and I don't want to deal with the fact that I can't run for office for a period of time doesn't really impact me because I wasn't planning on running for office. Ever? Um, if you ask Tina, ever. <laughs> um, and I can't blame her. I have no intention of doing it. I won't ever say never, never, but I want to focus on the private sector. And that was my goal when I left well, public office. In hindsight, do you regret running for governor as an independent? What, you know, a lot of people said, oh, you were the spoiler anyway. You sort of cost Charlie Baker the race. Do you regret it? No, I don't. I don't regret it. And I don't think anyone else should blame me for their loss or, or take or give me credit for their victory. I mean, we run our own races and, and there's nothing to say that the people, if I wasn't in the race, the people that voted for me would have voted for any one candidate. I mean, it would have been up to them. So, um, no, I did what I wanted to do. Um, I certainly didn't expect it to turn out this way. I was thinking on the way over here um, how difficult the last three years. And I thought the last year that year of the campaign was the toughest year I ever faced mm -hmm. in my life, just dealing with it and getting through that, all the attacks and just the pressure that I faced to, to stay in, to get out, what's your reasoning, all that kind of stuff. And then the two years after that were worse. <laughs> so um, I have no great desire. I wanted to serve the public. I love being treasurer. I felt I had accomplished everything that I had set out to accomplish and wanted to see if I could accomplish more as governor. The people spoke, I'm, I'm okay with that. I can move on, and I just hope everyone else can move on and let me alone. Well, is there a takeaway of all this? I sort of hate that phrase, but I mean, in terms of loyalty, in terms of what you learned about friends and relationships and people who are around you, other than Tina and your four beautiful daughters, of course, but what about the wider circle? Um, I just so many takeaways. I mean, I met two of the finest people in the world, and Brad Bailey and Jeff Denner, um, who stepped up to defend me when I was all, all alone and gave me the best legal advice and the best defense I could have ever gotten or could have ever paid for uh, in my lifetime. How are you going to pay for this? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take me a long time. You know, I have two great bosses who not only hired me while the investigation was going on, but kept me after the indictment. Uh, Tim Shanahan, John Ahern from Compass Securities, and, and they stood by me, as did all the people there. And, it's an interesting, I mean, you can look at the negative if you want and two years wasted and, you know, the, the cost and everything. And I'd prefer to look at the positive. I know who all my friends are, people who did stand by me, uh, people who worked for me at the Treasury who were, you know, given a lot of incentive to say things about me and help themselves and who, who, who wouldn't do it. Um, and that says a lot about them. It says a lot about the way we did things at Treasury. I think we, we, we did a good job and, and we treated people right. And I try to... That's the way I try to live my life. You treat people right, they'll treat you right in the end. And I think that's how it worked out for me in the end. So I, I don't, I don't want to look back. And, and there's some very positive things I took out of having to deal with testifying publicly on the stand for eight hours. And I remember we had talked about how 
how much pressure there is in those debates that I had during governor's office. Oh, yeah, office. you were nervous then. That was nothing compared to this. Nothing compared to this. <laughs> so, right. you know, you get to challenge yourself, and I wouldn't have wished for it, but it's a challenge that I, re you know, I was able to step up. I had a lot of, right. I couldn't have done it myself. I had a lot of support, and I'm a better person for right. having gone through it. This has been a fast 20 minutes. Thank you. Tim Cahill, thank you so it's nice much. nice to be back. Yeah. Thank you. It is nice to have you back. All right, and that is it for Greater Boston. I'm Emily Rooney. Thanks for watching.